Welcome to the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I am your host and teacher, Eddie Hyatt. So glad you joined me on this Monday morning. We're talking about living in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've been talking the last several sessions about Jesus and how Jesus is the goal uh, of the Holy Spirit. He is here to lift up Jesus. Jesus himself said in John 16, 13, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he shall glorify me. And Acts 1, 8, which I've quoted more than once in the last three days, where Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. For what reason? And you shall be witnesses to me. We are given the power of the Holy Spirit to make us bold witnesses to Jesus, for Jesus, in the earth. And so we must never divorce the Holy Spirit from his purpose here to glorify and lift up Jesus. Now, within this larger context and purpose, the Holy Spirit will also is here to help us, to lead us and guide us, and to be everything to us that Jesus would be, if Jesus were here in his physical body. Now, the Lord makes that clear uh, to us in different places, especially in John. He talks about this in John chapter 14, uh, 15 and 16. I want to read a, a particular passage from John chapter 16, uh, Gospel of John chapter 16, verse 7. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. How could this be? How could it be to their advantage? They must have really scratched their heads because they had, had come to depend on Jesus for everything. Um, when they were in the wilderness, nothing to eat and thousands of people there. Hey, Jesus had the answer. When they didn't have the money to pay taxes and um, Peter came to Jesus about it, Jesus had the answer. Peter, take your Take your fishing pole. Now, I'm sure it wasn't a fishing pole, but <laughs> Peter, go down to the, yeah, I think he said cast in your hook. So it was a fishing pole of some sort. And um, the fish, first fish that you, you catch that comes up, look in his mouth and there you will find a coin uh, and you can pay your taxes and mine with it. Wow. Jesus always had the answer for whatever the need. So it must have been somewhat of a shock when he says, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper or the comforter will not come. Now, the, again, the Greek word is parakletos, and it, it, it means one who comes alongside to help. And it was used in the ancient days. One way it was used was of a lawyer who came alongside a client and went with him to court before the judge. And he would say to the client, now, you know, you, I'm, I'm here to help you. And I know, I know the law. I know all the, the ins and outs of the laws and, and, and your issue. And I know this judge. So you just be quiet. You leave the talking to me, a parakletos. And so Jesus said, um, it's to your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the parakletos will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Now, how could, could it be to their advantage? Well, Jesus in his physical body, in his incarnate state, temporary state, could only be in one place at a time. He was limited by his physical corporal body. You know, Jesus never traveled very far from home. Probably just about everybody listening to me has has traveled farther from home than Jesus um, because of the length of my life that I have lived and with TV and radio I mean I'm sure I have preached to more G to more people than Jesus preached to while he was on earth but he he said when the helper comes and by the way Jesus, also spoke of himself and the Holy Spirit interchangeably. When the Holy Spirit came, he would be coming, but in a different form. In the form, in the person of the Holy Spirit. We see this in John chapter 14. Let me go back and read it. Uh, 
John 14, 13, he says, If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper here. Of course, he says that the Father will send the helper. The passage in chapter 16, he says, I will send the helper. Well, the Father and the Son are one. Jesus said to one of his disciples, Philip, who said to him one day, When are you going to show us the Father? And Jesus said, Philip, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. But he says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. That's that word parakletos, one called us alongside him, that he may abide with you forever. Now I'm going to be departing from you. The, the visible, physical me, you see, but the parakletos is going to come. He's going to stay with you forever. He goes on, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. I will not leave you like orphans, helpless, no one to care for you. Yeah, I've been looking after you really well all these, these three years I've been with you. And I'm not going to leave you. I'm going away, but I'm going to leave you like orphans. Here he says, I will come to you. And I think what Jesus is saying is, the visible, physical me that you see is going away. But the invisible, limitless me you don't see is going to come back to you. Wow. And in another place, over in John 16, he talks about how their hearts were sad because he was talking about departing from them. He said, but your hearts are going to rejoice. And you know, on the day of Pentecost, <laughs> uh, when the Holy Spirit came, and we got, we got to read that passage maybe in the next session. The Holy Spirit came to the waiting disciples on the day of Pentecost. There's one place where it talks about that the church was filled with joy. And with the Holy Spirit, they're filled with joy because Jesus has come back in the person of the Holy Spirit. And now he's with them wherever they go to the ends of the earth. Jesus is with them. And he's with you. He's with me. And it is because of the coming of the Holy Spirit that Matthew 18, 19 is real, where Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Now, we know he's not here in his physical body, but he is here in the person and presence of the Holy Spirit. And so this is why Jesus said it's going to be advantageous for you, because now in China, Believers get together in secret in a home because they're being persecuted. And the living Christ is there in their midst, in the person of the Holy Spirit. In Iran, in Canada, Nigeria, Pakistan, even here in America and Canada, wherever it may be. When believers come together, that passage is realized and fulfilled where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. And also Matthew chapter 18, where he promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. He said, lo, I, I am with you always. I think we should go and read that. Matthew chapter 28. I'm turning over in my Bible now, Matthew chapter 28, down towards the end of the chapter, where he says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, This is after his resurrection, before his ascension, before the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. The Greek word is ethnos. Literally, go and make disciples of all the ethnicities baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And listen to this. And lo, or, or listen, look, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Yeah, now in his resurrected form and body, 
He can be with them in the person of the Holy Spirit always, even to the end of the age, wherever they go preaching the gospel, he is there with them. No wonder the early church was rejoicing after the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. All my friends, have you invited the Holy Spirit to come into your life, into your being, and to fill you full and overflowing with his Spirit, with his presence and power? Let's let's do it now, Lord. We welcome you. We say, Jesus, we are thirsty. And you said, whoever is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. I pray for my brother and my sister who is thirsting after you. And as they look to you, even now, I ask you, O God, to come in your presence and in your power and fill them with your Holy Spirit according to your promise. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm Eddie Hyatt. Check out my website at eddiehyatt.com. If I can be a blessing to you in any way, send me an email. My email address is there on the home page uh, of my website. Uh, check out my bookstore. Got some incredible books that will be about revival, about the Holy Spirit, about prophecy. Be a tremendous blessing to you. They're there on the website in a website bookstore. They're also available on Amazon, and I'll look forward to seeing you. Uh, this is Friday. I'll see you on Monday. And I hope you'll share these sessions with any of your friends who, whom, whom you think that these would be a blessing to. And I'll see you on Monday.